Hi there, I'm James and welcome back to Hypertops. Since the last video, we hit 10,000 subscribers, which is a crazy number. And I wanted to take the opportunity to say thank you face to face for joining me on this journey and for making this project possible. I never thought I'd find the community of people that I have and I'm just very grateful, so thank you. Now, let's get back to spinning tops. In the last video, we put a lot of effort into optimizing the grip for starting speed, and it's time we implemented our findings. To summarize, we discovered that although large nailed grips transmit more torque, thin grips can start the top the fastest, albeit with more difficulty. And in the end, we found that a tapered grip like this has the best compromise. So that's the grip sorted, what else are we changing? For one, I tried 3D printing the core. Using plastic in my tops is something I've tried to avoid due to poor mechanical properties. But when I realized this new core saves 18 precious grams, I decided it was okay. The reason the new core is lighter is twofold. Firstly, the PLA I'm using has a density less than half that of aluminium. And secondly, 3D printing makes it easy to hollow out the inside significantly without compromising structural integrity. Overall, I'm very pleased with this innovation, and the fact that we can achieve a core this light without compromising aerodynamics is huge. The next change is with the flywheel, which has been the same since Mark 22. I tweaked the profile to improve airflow separation and for ease of manufacturing, but the main difference is that it weighs 7% more. This is because Mark 25's flywheel is made from a new alloy, 95% tungsten and 5% nickel. At 18 grams per centimeter cubed, this insane material is even denser than what I've used before. This expensive part accounts for 95% of the mass and 99% of the material cost of the spinning top. By the way, this video isn't sponsored, so if you would like to support the channel, then please like, comment, and subscribe. Anyway, I polished the flywheel down to 0.1 microns to minimize air drag, and now all we have to do is assemble. This workflow proved to be a lot faster, easier, and less wasteful than what I used to do, and the quality of the results surprised me. With a best spin time of 1 hour, 22 minutes, and 35 seconds, I'm pleased to say Mark 25 is my new longest spinning top. Although I'm pleased with this time, it's still a bit behind the Guinness World Record of 1 hour and 37 minutes, so I decided to investigate a new trick. This is a shroud. It's an enclosure designed to keep air circulating around the spinning top, and it provides a slight decrease in air drag. Now, if you're familiar with the idea of boundary layers in fluid flows, this may come as a surprise, because putting a stationary boundary closer to the top should make the velocity gradient steeper, and hence shear forces and viscous air drag greater. And you'd be right, but the bigger picture is more complicated than this. Do check out the paper in the description, but to my understanding, Although shear stress is a factor, the total air drag of spinning tops is actually dominated by large-scale flow structures and pressure effects. Shrouds contain this flow, lessening centrifugal pumping and reducing overall energy loss, even if the boundary layer shear is higher. Great, so in theory this works, but practically does it make spinning tops spin longer? In fact, I already know the answer to this is yes, because this technique has been proven to work by Jacopo Simonelli. But what is the optimal size and shape? Well, to answer that, I did some experiments of my own. At first, I tried attaching flywheels to a drone motor and monitoring the power consumption for different speeds and shroud designs. However, even after using a formula to turn my power results into braking torque, normalizing the results against the motor, and removing anomalies, the results weren't great. In fact, I found that for rectangular flywheels, shrouds were only beneficial above 4000 RPM, and for oval flywheels, they only seemed to help above 5000 RPM. I think the issue was that the shroud effect was being drowned out by the non-linear torque profile and noise of my cheap motor and speed controller. So I did a more sensitive test, spinning up Mark 25 in each shroud and measuring the RPM decay from 2000 to 500 RPM. Now the picture is very different, with every shroud being beneficial to spin times. Let's look at each variable. This graph is for the rectangular shrouds, which had a 2mm gap performing the best with a 19% time increase. 
However, for the rounded shrouds, the optimum was around 6mm, with 5 and 7mm shrouds performing equally well with a 23% time increase. Comparing the rectangular and rounded shrouds together, it seems that rounded generally performs better, so this is what I'll use going forwards. Finally, for a 6mm rounded shroud, I tested different levels of porosity, 0, 5, 10, 15, 25, and 50%. This is an idea I picked up from an academic paper, however, in my testing, it seems the presence of holes made the shroud less effective. So, here is our final shroud design. I tried printing it from a transparent filament, but only with marginal success. It will have to do for now, but I hope to make better transparent shrouds in the future. At last, we can do the final tests, and the results are promising. With a shroud, we achieved 1 hour, 28 minutes, and 47 seconds. This is a great time, but not quite the improvement I was hoping for, at around 8%. The truth is that the shroud helps the most in the first 20 minutes or so while the top is spinning fast, and after that, it has little impact. There's definitely more research required. You can see the full spin on our new channel, Hypertops 2. I've decided to move all future full spin videos here for YouTube algorithm reasons, so if you're interested then do check out the new channel. That's it for this video, but stay tuned because I've been busy behind the scenes. If you want to be notified when my next upload releases, then please subscribe and hit the bell icon below. As always, do leave your thoughts and suggestions in a comment, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.